Hi. Good to see everyone again. We are here to talk about open time variable funds, which uh, if you don't know, it's a technology developed in the past four years. I talked about the history, how it started, how it got to become standard on the web. Do a couple quick demos so you get the idea, and then Dominic will talk about how we rolled this out, or he rolled this out in Chrome on our platforms. Uh, technology itself is not new, it existed since the 90s in Apple and Adobe products, but the new way is uh, getting it standardized and work on the web on every platform. And four years ago, I left the TARP conference in September thinking to myself that all these designers are designing fonts on, the, on their workflow and then they typically develop what we call masters. The master is what they draw by hand and they draw something really light and something really bold and heavy and then they interpolate in between. And I thought to myself, this doesn't make sense, we should, we should just do the interpolation at runtime, right? Instead of sending or shipping on Android or any device like seven different ways of a font, we just need the master and interpolate at runtime. And this is exactly what Apple TrueType GX technology and Adobe Multiple Masters did back in the 90s, but it just didn't pick up. Uh, and they dropped it from open time. So I went back and started working on resurrecting this technology in our tool chain. We were building the Noto fonts and at the same time implemented in FreeType. FreeType already had some implementation from the Apple days. And in Heartbot, and pulling everything together. And then in 2015, I started talking about it at conferences and open type meetings. And in February 2016, Apple contacted me saying that Microsoft is interested in doing this in open type. And then we formed a working group in February 2016 between Adobe, Apple, Microsoft, and Google to work on this together. And we met monthly, day, uh, full day of uh, working group and uh, just mainly list and phone conferences for six months and in September 2016 just two years ago we announced OpenType 1.8 with five variations at the A-type conference and basically just so you get an idea this is what it is this is a font just text box and this is OpenType font variations not just a width axis, this one has a weight and width. And you can have, these are the two of the standardized axes, the other one being optical size, but you can have arbitrary axis of variations. For example, this is another tool, uh, this one for example has a bunch of custom axis, you can change the slab shape, the uh, all kind of fancy things, I don't know. Not every instance of this one looks good. <laughs> but this is just to show the custom axis. And someone went on and added an animation axis to this one. <laughs> this is a four kilobyte font with CSS animations. Anyway, so after September, <laughs> okay. So in October 2016, Miles uh, Maxfield and I proposed this to the CSS working group and quickly was adopted. And then uh, WebKit rolled it out quickly because uh, Apple already had support for the basic technology. And then uh, six months later, in April 2017, Dominic announced Chrome support for variable fonts on our platform. And then uh, in last year, Microsoft Windows Update, Azure started supporting it, and uh, Apple finished their support, and Firefox just recently announced uh, support for it. So it's been one of the fastest rollouts of any technology indefinitely in fonts land, but also I think on, a, on the web it's been pretty quick adoption. And yeah, the kind of thing we haven't yet explored is integrating this into better layout. So right now this demo is using JavaScript, but these are some 
things you can do in the future. But this has not been explored how to tie layout restrictions into fast radiation access. With that, I'll hand it to Dominic. Okay, sorry about the slight delay. Um, yes, as um, Bernard was saying, we've been working together on variable fonts uh, for quite a while in its release now in Chrome. And I have a couple more demos that I'd like to go through. Uh, so here's a website called uh, Font Playground. Um, that's made by a, a designer at Adobe, Wen Tien Zhang. And again, you have a couple of fonts that you can play with. And uh, you can, for example, just uh, type here and use those. And then use these controls here to control, control various things, like uh, the yeast and the gravity axis, in this case. Um, and I think Bayard had this example of the fit font by David Jonathan Ross. And then you can even kind of control it with these pulleys here. And um, uh, there is the uh, FF Meta font uh, designed by Eric Speakerman for Monotype. And here you can, um, there is also an italics access in this one. So suddenly uh, the font switches on the sort of Roman versus the italic axis here. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> you can play around, you can uh, use, you can type your own text, you can use uh, other sort of variable fonts, examples that are publicly available. Uh, one thing that's perhaps interesting um, in the, uh, perhaps interesting in the, um, oops, In the Adobe variable font uh, example, here you have a dollar sign. And if you control the axis on this one, then suddenly this middle strikes through and the dollar actually disappears. So you cannot only manipulate the contours of the font, but you can also, depending on axis values, switch to a completely different glyph altogether. Um, and I think that's also what this uh, italics axis is doing. It's, it's switching to a different glyph shape at certain axis positions. I mentioned the FF meta font. Um, and here's another example on CodePen made by Jason Pamente. And Bernard illustrated a little bit about um, using the variable font concepts in, in, in layout. And so this whole page is done with one font. And here you can see it's like one file, 84 kilobytes. And all the uh, font instantiations on this page are the same file, including the italics and uh, border versions, etc. So here in this page, uh, Jason experimented with uh, implementing responsive design based on uh, a variable font. So when you change this, uh, you see that the single column layout some things have changed, the line spacing, and also parameters on the front, um, sizing and, and, and the relation of sizes on the page. <coughs> so you can use uh, variable fonts very well in responsive web design to not only um, change like the, the layout, but also change parameters of the, of the font itself. Also, Bela was explaining about the concept of multiple masters and, and um, linear interpolation, but uh, we are both personally quite impressed with what, a, um, what an international type design company is doing. Um, this is a demo from Underwear, um, shown at a Taipei this year and in a conference before, in conferences before. Um, this is also a variable font. So they are trying to create this handwriting font um, by using variable font interpolation. And they're having some um, very sophisticated tooling to make that happen. They also managed to um, demo a Chinese font 
where this looks like a video or like a, uh, an animation somehow, but it is a font. And you can, in fact, uh, use these axis sliders to also to create these uh, strokes of the Chinese characters. So there is some potential in the technology beyond sort of linear interpolation. Um, if, you, if you think about it hard and work on very sophisticated tooling to make these kinds of forms happen. Yes, so let's go back to the slides. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I demoed a couple of things. I want to talk about how we get these things into the browser and talk about the CSS changes to make variable fonts happen. Um, so here's a, a, an example of font weight, stretch style uh, before variable fonts. And you see there are these values, normal, bold, lighter, bolder, and a couple of discrete values, 100, 200, 300, uh, up to 900. The interesting thing here is these are passed as complete tokens. They're like a keyword. They're not actually number values. So for variable fonts, we have to change that to become a number so that you can use any value between 1 and 1,000, for example, for font weight. And the next thing that is needed is in the font face declarations, you need to tell the engine what can your font do? And here in the before example, there's a, a bold version of Roboto, or a bold condensed version of Roboto with a font weight of 700. Um, but we want to change that so that we can use Roboto in all variants that, that are in between 100 and 700, for example. So we need a new extended font face declaration that has font weight 400 to 700 font size 10 degrees to 20 degrees, font stretch, for example, 15 to 200 from uh, condensed to extended. And then we need a new font style matching algorithm so that um, it's not only working on these discrete positions and finding individual font faces, but also applying the correct axis values to the font face declarations. And uh, so I'm going with these CSS properties, I'm going from the more high level ones where you actually talk about well known axes and well known styling to uh, lower level ones. Font optical sizing is perhaps in the middle. Um, font optical sizing describes the contrast ratio or the contrast within the glyph. So in it, uh, depending on the font size, you want a higher contrast or lower contrast in your, in your glyph. And font optical sizing connects the font size to applying this parameter to a font that supports this axis. Uh, and font variation settings finally is the sort of low level uh, access to this whole rasterization and layout system um, where you can act actually apply concrete values to the axis that are inside the font. Uh, Lowercase axis here mean that these axes have been registered and are a bit of a sort of standardized axis that exists in multiple fonts. Uh, uppercase values are uh, your custom axes that are individual to your font. And this is the lowest level axis, uh, axis in CSS to, to applying these parameters. Uh, in terms of variable fonts in Blink, uh, we the Blink is Chrome's layout engine. Um, we implemented the new CSS font matching algorithm. So from going away from font traits, which has been this kind of one font face concrete instance, to font selection values, which describes this kind of range. And font selection capabilities are storing what the font face definition makes available. I'm going to go through an example of how this algorithm worked before. Let's say you have these three um, in the discrete font face declarations here with Roboto at 200, at uh, 400, and at 700 weight. And you have a piece of text that says style font weight 600. Now, how do you find the corresponding font for this? Um, you come in at um, 600 on this axis. And then you search for the closest, and the, the previous version of the CSS matching algorithm was describing rules for what is the closest. So here you come 
come up and search for 600 and then first you search in the sort of bolder direction and you uh, reach uh, 700 and apply that to your text. Now with variable fonts this works a bit differently. Here we have two instances, Roboto with a range of 100 to 300 and Roboto with a range 500 to 700. And uh, with the new meshing algorithm, you sort of reach, when you search for 600, you enter this first interval of 500 to 700, and then identify that 600 works here, or that you have found a mesh. And then you apply the 600 weight parameter to the variable font and give this to your rasterization. As, as we already mentioned, rasterizing variable fonts uh, means that you have a set of access parameters and you apply that, you apply that to the font uh, and specify to your rasterizer that this is the set of parameters that you want and this is how you want the list to be rasterized. And, um, and in the example from the underwear, uh, Chinese font, that even means like how many strokes you can, for example, have on your Chinese list. Um, here's an example of what this interface looks like. In Skia, Skia is our graphics uh, engine in Chrome, um, where we have this SK font manager, font parameters, axis um, class, where we can say uh, this is the weight axis specified by the tag WGHT. And after you've run the font selection algorithm, you come out with a with a value that you want to apply to this. So then you apply um, the the weight value that you have found from your matching, you apply that to the access parameters and then pass that to SIA and get a correctly rasterized result. SIA in turn uses several backends. So we need to run Chrome on uh, Mac OS, on Chrome OS of course, on, on Linux, Android, Windows. So on each of these platforms, we need to find support for this. Uh, this is sort of the cross-platform challenge here for variable fonts. How do we do this on all the platforms? On Bidat mentioned, variable fonts are implemented fully in FreeType. Uh, we have FreeType in, in uh, many of our platforms. We have it on Linux, of course. We have it Chrome OS, Android, all running FreeType for rasterization. But on Windows, we are using DirectWrite through SIA. And on Mac OS, we are using Cortex also through SIA. Uh, this mostly apl applies to rasterization, shaping we're doing completely inside Chrome based on metrics values that we get from the uh, platform's font systems. But okay, now we have a uh, prototype of variable fonts running in Chrome, but only on free type. What do we do on the other platforms? <coughs> and we came up with a solution of having a hybrid font stack on the platforms where we have limited support for variable fonts. And this mostly applies to Windows and older versions of Windows. Um, Windows 10, um, I think the most recent version has variable font support, and even the version before had variable font support, but did not have the APIs for us to be able to apply these access parameters. Um, so on Windows versions that do not fully support variable fonts to the sort of in the way we need. We actually switch our font backend and go to free type, and we can have uh, direct write rasterized fonts and free type rasterized fonts on the same page. And similarly, on macOS versions lower than 10.12, we can also switch to free type to make variable fonts happen. So as mentioned. Depending on what for font format we are identifying in a web font, we are switching the font backend and tell Skia, like here in this case, we want a free type backed uh, font face instead of a platform rasterizer backed font face. Now you're perhaps wondering, like, okay, if you have to ship free type on all the platforms, doesn't that make your binary a lot larger? I think. Free type, depending on build configuration, is between like 1.3 megabyte, 2.1 megabyte. Um, and our release team is very, uh, very sensitive to sort of not growing the binary size. But this is the result. Um, and we got a bit lucky there because we already had to ship free type anyway because the PDF, uh, the P uh, PDF here inside. Hmm? 
<laughs> the PDF viewer inside Chrome was already using free types. But we had, I think, we had three different versions of free type in our code base. Um, we, were not we were not shipping three different versions in one binary, but uh, we have three different versions in our code base. Uh, the one in PDF -ium was not fully up to date, and we had um, a different one that we were shipping on free type Android uh, on Chrome Android versus the one um, in in desktop and other versions. So there was a bit of work to be done about getting all of these aligned, PDF -ium to upgrade free type. Um, and the one which that we ship on Android uh, combined with the one that we use on desktop and then a bit of massaging the build system so that everything works um, together. So these three different checkouts of retype were merged and PDF and were upgraded and then we were able to ship it on Windows as the same uh, free type library that is used by the PDF viewer and uh, uh, very response hybrid implementation. And then in Chrome 62, we released variable font support um, for web fonts, and this is now shipping for quite a while. I think we are at version 69 now. <coughs> With this hybrid font stack uh, that we use for variable fonts, we got a couple of features in a way almost, <coughs> almost for free. Um, because once we had established this architecture, we can also use free type for other font formats that are not supported natively by the underlying platform rasterizer. One of them is CFF2, which is an Adobe format for uh, contours that is different from true type contours. Uh, CVDT, CVLC, generally uh, two bitmap color font support is what we also gain there. So we can use the sort of uh, Android or Google style uh, color fonts here. Uh, for example, the Noto color emoji font that you see on Android is an example of the CBDT, CBLC uh, bitmap color font format. We also support SPX cross platforms. That's the Apple style uh, emoji font format. Apple color emoji is one example for this. And we support uh, color C5 uh, color font format now on all platforms. So this is all realized using the hybrid font stack um, and switching back to free type if you want to. Uh, I have a I have an example of that. So um, here, for example, this is um, this is an example of the Sego UI emoji uh, Windows font for uh, emoji. This is basically several true type contours layered on top of each other. So this is not a bitmap font, but it's actually uh, true type um, contours with a palette information on how and, and compositing information of how you put several glyphs together and in what color you uh, rasterize them. And then, uh, so it's a, it's a quite storage efficient format for a color font. And this is also a uh, supported cross platform, not in the shipping version yet, but in, in the canary version to today. And um, here's a sort of test site made by Roland Niskens, Pixel Unbuffed and L Chroma Check. You can see, um, you can test your browser for color font format. And now the current canary version of Chrome supports these uh, three formats, Aspects, Color, CVDT, CVLC, on uh, all platforms that Chrome runs on. Can you go back to that slide? Which this one? Yeah. I think it's also worth emphasizing why variable fonts were such a success collaboration, because the previous technology upgrade to open type was color fonts, and Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Adobe each developed their own format. That's why we have only performance with all of them part of open type with variable fonts. All of us figured that we need to do it properly as well format. Uh, what, what about the CD and open type? Uh, unfortunately, that's not yet happening in Chrome. Uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> 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 yes, so um, we, w we came here to demonstrate what variable fonts are. Uh, then I talked about the hybrid font stack in Chrome as the implementation um, to overcome this challenge of what we do on platforms where variable fonts are not natively supported yet. Um, 
Chrome is bringing cross-platform support for variable fonts and uh, these three color font formats. Um, and we think the benefits of this hybrid font stack architecture, meaning that we can, whatever we, we gain in terms of additional format support or uh, features in free type, we have that available on the platforms that Chrome runs on, and we can bring those features independent from the operating system's uh, rasterization. Yes, that's, that's what we brought to the web and the tech <laughs>